So next up, we about to check out some of these weird and strange photos that scientists can't seem to explain. Let's check them out. Scientists and experts are the first people we look for when we're trying to find answers to all sorts of things. However, even the brightest minds sometimes get puzzled and stumped. I guess that's just how bizarre our universe is. Now let's take a look at these photos that had even experts puzzled and scrambling for answers. Yo. From the elusive skunk ape to the giant finger discovered in Egypt, here are 20 photos that scientists cannot explain. Number 20. The Elusive Skunk Ape Now just take a look at this photo. What do you see? This photo is allegedly a real, authentic picture of the elusive skunk ape. Now if it's... What I see is the reason why I need a trail camera in my backyard, bro. You know what I mean? Because a lot of us probably wouldn't even know or know this was roaming in our yard if we didn't have a trail camera. I need one. It's the first time you've heard about this cryptid. Let me tell you about it. The skunk ape is a creature that allegedly lives deep in the wetlands of Florida. Here, locals speak of a mysterious creature known for its foul odor and ape-like appearance. Descriptions of the skunk ape vary, but most accounts paint a picture of a tall, hairy, bipedal creature, not unlike Bigfoot. However, what sets the skunk ape apart is its distinctive pungent odor, which has been likened to rotten eggs or methane. This image- I don't care nothing about the odor. Did you see the strength? Did you see what it was doing to that tree? That's what we need to be worried about. Showing a hunched creature with glowing eyes lurking among the bushes has sparked endless discussions and debates. Since the photograph surfaced online, opinions have been split. Some believe it offers undeniable proof of the skunk ape's existence, pointing to its distinctive features and the difficulty of faking such a shot. Many believe a well-known creature can appear in the shot and easily get mistaken as a skunk ape. To this day, it's unknown whether this creature exists in the swampy area of Florida or simply exists in people's minds. Before we go on, like this video, yeah. smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. You run, in, you run into that joker in the woods somewhere, bro. You better be fast. <laughs> Extremely fast, because if it get a hold of you, it ain't letting you go. It's over with. Number 19. The Spook Light On a quiet road near the border of Missouri and Oklahoma, an enigmatic phenomena has puzzled both locals and travelers for decades. Known as the spook light, this floating orb of light appears without warning, dances, hovers, and just as suddenly, vanishes. Bright, sometimes shifting in color, and often seeming to approach only to recede as one gets closer. The spook light has become the stuff of legends. Tales from Native American tradition suggest the lights might be spirits star-crossed lovers wandering the earth or ancient warriors patrolling their lands. Attempts to explain the spook light have varied widely. Some theories suggest atmospheric gases or refracted headlights from distant highways. To this day, the mystery of the spook light remains. Some locals still try to get a glimpse of it and capture this bizarre light in photographs. However, to this day, no conclusive evidence remains. Number 18. UFO Captured by an F-18 Pilot Among the most mysterious things on our planet are UFOs, or unidentified flying objects. Reports of strange lights, unusual aircraft, and unexplained aerial phenomena have been recorded for centuries. But how frequent are these sightings? Over the past decades, reported UFO sightings have experienced rises and falls. Factors like popular culture, technological advancements, and increased awareness play a role in the number of reports. Some years witness hundreds of claims, while others might see fewer. Common aircraft, drones, and natural occurrences like meteor showers or star movements often account for a significant portion of reports. Number 17. Have y'all noticed, like, the die down and everything going on with UFOs, UFPs, whatever you want to call them? Even that family that made that claim and went viral and news was surrounding them and everything like that. Have y'all heard from them lately? Interesting, right? I just need to keep reminding y'all to pay attention to that. We haven't even heard from that family in a long time, bro. For me, since that incident. 49-foot snake. A 15-meter snake allegedly lived in the vast expanses of the Katunga region, now part of the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1959. 
A Belgian helicopter pilot named Remy van Leerde reported a sighting that would capture the intrigue of many. An enormous snake claimed to be around 15 meters long. The evidence? A photograph was taken from the helicopter. It shows the snake with its head raised off the ground, as if in reaction to the overhead presence. The creature, as described by Van Leerde, sported a distinct white crest running along its body and a large triangular head. For context, the world's largest known snake species, like the green anaconda and the reticulated python, are giants in their own right. Yet, they typically don't approach the lengths reported in Katanga. At most, the largest reticulated python was recorded to be approximately 3.2 meters, or 20.5 feet long. A region rich in biodiversity, Katanga is home to- How you just sitting there, fam, just like you would never even see it. You could step on his head, which would be a bad idea, but <laughs> I mean, you gotta watch where you're stepping, but bro. 20.5 feet Look at that. That's creepy. That's creepy. And that's probably why, because a lot of people be like, well, why don't we see him? It's because they'd be buried up under the water somewhere just like this. Just like this, they come out, they strike, they get their food, snatch them back, strangle them, do what they need to do, eat them, and then I, I think that can last them for how long? I think that can last them for a good while, depending on the size of their food they eat. Long, a region rich in biodiversity, Katanga is home to various wildlife, but a snake of such reported size? Sounds quite hard to believe, isn't it? The lack of additional sightings or evidence since 1959 also raises questions. Do you really think there's an almost 50-foot snake in the middle of the wilderness in the Democratic Republic of Congo? It sounds far-fetched, but who knows? We might hear about a giant serpent in its wilderness soon. Number 16. Crater with Unknown Origin Right in the middle of the vast Siberian wilderness is this bizarre crater. Resembling a large rocky mound with a pronounced hollow center, this structure has puzzled researchers. After all, no one knows about its origin. Rising approximately 40 meters high and measuring around 100 meters in diameter, its sheer size and distinctive shape have led many to question where it came from. Since its discovery in the mid-20th century, theories about the crater's formation have varied widely. Some suggest it's the result of a meteorite impact, while others believe it could be linked to volcanic activity. Still, Others wonder if it might be tied to underground gas explosions. Despite mm. numerous expeditions... All three of those examples, maybe not the meteor, but the other ones are extremely bad. Volcanic activity. Yeah, yeah. All that's... <laughs> all that is bad. Gas explosion. They need to kind of, like, barricade that off some kind of way, man, and let people know. And I'm looking at these, this picture which looks like people are standing in there, man. And the one thing I, that always annoys me when I see stuff like that, if that's what this is, is people standing in there with no type of mask on or no type of breathing apparatus on the, so they're breathing in good air because you have no idea what you're breathing in right there. That irks me, man. People are just reckless sometimes. In studies, a definitive explanation remains elusive. Radiocarbon dating indicates the structure is relatively young. And yeah, look at them. Nothing on his face, no type of SCB on his back so he can breathe in good air. You don't know what you're doing. These be the people that several years later, they figured out that they got something. They contracted something from breathing, whatever they were breathing in right here. Geological terms, forming roughly 500 years ago. However, its precise age and cause continue to be subjects of debate. The indigenous people of the region, the Yakuts, have their interpretations. To them, the crater is a place filled with legends and stories, some even considering it to be a portal to another world. A natural formation? A crater formed by a cosmic object? Or a gateway to another realm? Perhaps the truth will continue to remain unknown. Number 15. Mysterious Spectre Now we've all had those times where our group of friends wanted to do something different. Going to the beach at night, visiting an abandoned hospital, going to an allegedly cursed facility. Sounds dangerous, and these are things that we shouldn't do. But hey, we were all young once. In 2010, Natasha Oliver and her friends in Wem United Kingdom spent an evening hanging out in front of the lawn of a rundown building. They had some food and some drinks, and they were all just hoping for a fun time. In the middle of hanging out, 
One of them decided to snap a photo of the group. They were all smiles for the commemorative photo, not knowing the of the sinister figure in the background. Now, if you look closely here, you can see what looks like a scary apparition sitting on the windowsill of the building in the backdrop. Each bo Can y'all make out what that is? I can't tell if it's like somebody wearing like a clown mask. You could have had uh, uh, squatters in there, anything, man. Trust me, I did reckless stuff like this when I was a kid. I wouldn't dare do that today, but as a kid, yeah, I did this type of stuff. And would have never thought to look back or worry about a squatter or somebody being in there. We, the crew I, I ran with, we'd have went inside there. We'd have all been inside the abandoned building and stuff like that, man. I was super reckless as a kid, man. I don't know why my mom let me out the house, but that, yeah, that could look like a clown mask or anything. And anytime I think clown mask, I think John Wayne Gacy, John Wayne Gacy. I just, I, that just pops into my mind photo captured consistently revealed these mysterious figures on the building site's first floor. Some tried scaling the building scaffolding to check it out, but found nothing unusual, particularly no floorboards on that level. Oliver strongly asserted that the image wasn't altered digitally and expressed her hope that experts in paranormal activity and photography would shed light on the enigma. Oliver hypothesized that the ghostly figure might be a woman, possibly cradling a baby. However, Others mm. believe that the alleged ghost was actually a doll rather than a specter. Looking at this photo, what do you think? Number four. That just makes me think, man, you never know when you're being watched. Like, you never know. That's the scary part about that. You never know if somebody's watching you from a distance and plotting or doing something. <sighs> 14. The Wild Man. Just take a look at this photo. This suit covered with spikes is shrouded in mystery. You see, no one knows the real purpose of this suit. Some believe that this suit is actually a bear hunting suit that was used in the 1800s. However, others believe that this isn't the case. It's quite hard to think of another purpose for this thing though. What other uses could this thing possibly have? Well, some believe that it originated in the 18th or 19th century in Germany or Switzerland. This might not be used for bear hunting, but rather a costume representing a folk figure seen in the Vogel Griff Festival in Basel. Do you guys have any idea as to what this thing might be? Let me know. I've seen this in a few movies. One was a, a, a what was his name back? Something Razor. Um, I can't think of it. Y'all probably know from back when I was a kid, my childhood, it was a scary movie with that guy. He had those pointy things coming all out of his face and his body and everything like that. You know what I mean? My mom wouldn't let me watch it. But uh, come to think of it, if y'all remember the title, or well, I'm going to type it in, um, might be Hellraiser. I think it's that. But um, I'm going to go back and look it up and see and check that out. Another movie where a guy wore something like this, a costume similar to this was, I think it was like People Under the Was it People Under the Or was it just a, le a leather suit? It might have just been a leather suit. I don't know. But this reminds me of like a costume or something that people would wear or that, something I saw in a movie know about it in the comments down below. Number 13. The Bizarre San Pedro Mummy In 1932, a curious discovery was made in Wyoming's San Pedro Mountains. Gold prospectors, while dynamiting a cliffside section, unearthed a small sealed chamber. Inside this chamber is a figure soon known as the San Pedro Mountains Mummy. Measuring a mere 6.5 inches in height, this mummified figure, seated with crossed legs, presents a puzzling sight. The mummy's appearance, with a flattened cranium and hands covering the face, raised questions about its origins and nature. Initial speculations ranged from the mummy being an ancient Native American child to more sensational theories suggesting it might be proof of a tiny humanoid race or extraterrestrial visitors. Scientific examinations, however, offered more logical theories. X-ray analysis revealed sharp teeth and a fully formed adult skeletal structure leading experts to conclude that the mummy was likely an adult and not a child. Medical conditions such as anencephaly or progeria have been proposed to explain the mummy's small stature and unique appearance. But of course, many continue to believe that this mummy is actually the mummified remains of an extraterrestrial creature. What do you think about this? An alien or just a human with a bizarre condition? Let me know about your thoughts in the comments down below. Number 12. Yeah, we would need to 
we, need, we would need for them to get a sample and be able to tell us, man, because I've seen something similar to that before. And we all made the assumption that that was just alien. That was something that was from here. It still could be, but they need to get those samples out to scientists to be able to confirm that that's an actual human. Geophone Rock Anomaly. Just take a look at this photo. This was allegedly taken by Apollo 17 on its last flight to the moon. It was captured near an area known as Geophone Rock. However, this picture was officially cataloged by NASA as a blank image. But for many, this is nothing but blank. This image displays a triangular shadow on the lunar surface, reminiscent of a pyramid shape. Naturally, many theories emerged from this photo. While many theories have emerged about this anomaly, ranging from natural formations to ancient extraterrestrial structures, the most prevalent scientific explanations lean towards perspective and shadow play. The lunar surface, with its uneven terrain and varied rock formations, can cast shadows and create optical illusions that might be misinterpreted from certain angles. Further analysis of the photograph and considering the surrounding images taken by Apollo 17 suggest that the pyramid might combine low-angle sunlight and the area's natural topography. However, many believe this photo shows a pyramid created by life forms in the lunar environment. While the consensus is that this pyramid is nothing but a natural formation, others believe that this is, indeed, a structure created by extraterrestrial life. Number 11. Hey man, we just, what was it, yesterday, we just asked Alexa, did what's the population on some of these planets, whether it be the moon or Mars and stuff like that, and it actually gave a number. So when you hear these conspiracy theories about maybe UFOs created these pyramids here or something there, and then you ask something that kind of confirms it, 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 gives you, it makes things a lot more weird. <laughs> Seriously. Alien Captured in Chile 2004 Humanity's gaze has long been fixed on the stars, and with it, the question has persisted through millennia. Are we alone in the universe? The idea of extraterrestrial beings visiting Earth is as old as human history. Many believe that ancient cultures have long interacted with extraterrestrials. Many believe that aliens had a hand in constructing the most incredible ancient structures of past civilizations. In more recent history, reported sightings of unidentified flying objects, more commonly known as UFOs, have spurred debates, investigations, and endless speculations. While many sightings have practical explanations like aircraft reflections, atmospheric phenomena, or satellites, a fraction remains unexplained, fueling the extraterrestrial hypothesis. The scientific community remains largely skeptical, emphasizing the need for empirical evidence. Yet, projects like SETI, or Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, continue to find any alien life that might have come down to Earth. Now, this photo is just among the countless alleged alien sightings on Earth. In this blurred photo, you can see two gentlemen on horses, and right in the middle is a short creature with a huge head. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why is it that whenever there are alien sightings, the photos are always blurred or grainy? Yep. And don't worry, I'm thinking that too. But, well, conspiracy theorists believe that this photo shows an actual alien. However, others believe that this photo shows nothing but a toddler running in the middle of the road. I'll let you be the judge. Number 10. This be making me think they be scrambling our technology, man. They're aware of it. It's almost like they know it's around, so they do something to scramble it. So we can never get a clear photo. The Specter of Newby Church. This might look like a poorly edited photo, but it's actually known as one of the most authentic pieces of ghost evidence in the world. This photo was captured by Reverend Kenneth F. Lord in 1963. It was captured in the halls of Newby at the Church of Christ the Consoler in North Yorkshire, United Kingdom. The figure in the image, bearing a striking resemblance to a person, has led to varied interpretations. Many who believe in its authenticity think it looks like a monk from the 16th century, with his face concealed by a white veil, possibly due to leprosy or another facial condition. However, some argue it could just be someone dressed up for the photo. While initial observations claim the figure to be around 9 feet tall, this is disputed since the figure's feet aren't visible. It could be standing on an elevated platform, which gives an illusion of added height. Upon examination, some photo experts have ruled out the possibility of the image being a product of double exposure. Now, I don't know about you, but real or not, this photo sends off creepy, spooky vibes. Number 9. 
Disappearance of Frederick Valentich In 1978, a young Australian pilot named Frederick Valentich took a routine flight over the Bass Strait heading to King Island. However, the flight would soon become anything but ordinary. During his journey, Valentich reported to Melbourne Air Traffic Control that he was being followed by an unidentified aircraft. He described it as having a metallic shine with bright lights, and it appeared to be moving at high speeds, maneuvering around him in ways beyond the capabilities of known aircraft at the time. What's more bizarre about this incident are the transmissions. After Valentich reported the engine malfunction, he uttered what came to be his final words, surrounded by eerie static. It is hovering, and it's not an aircraft. After this transmission, contact was lost. An extensive search was initiated, spanning days and covering vast areas. Yet, neither Valentich nor his aircraft were ever found. To this day, many believe that extraterrestrial creatures captured Valentich. However, some think it was a military or government-related incident. Number 8. See, now, I would blame the government on for this. Because my thing is, if y'all know that there's something up there in the sky, y'all know there's possible UAPs, y'all know there are UFOs, you have documentation, you have story witnesses come forward to you and tell you this stuff is out there, and you still allow people to fly, allow people to, to fly their single engine or, or whatever you call those planes, you still allow people to go up into the sky like that, man? That's on them. That's on them. Because they should say something, bro, instead of keeping this from us. The UFO Sighting of Kenneth Arnold From Valentich, here's another alleged alien sighting involving a pilot. Kenneth Arnold was a renowned pilot, but his name is remembered today because of an alleged UFO sighting. It all started in 1947. While flying his Call Air A2 aircraft near Mount Rainier in Washington, Arnold reported seeing nine unusual objects in the sky. They moved at a staggering speed and in a unique undulating motion, like a saucer skipping on water. This description gave birth to the term flying, flying saucer, saucer. Yep. which would become deeply ingrained in popular culture. Arnold's detailed account described the object as flat, shiny, and somewhat crescent-shaped, reflecting sunlight like a mirror. News of Arnold's sighting spread rapidly. It predated the famous Roswell incident by just a few weeks, setting the stage for a summer filled with UFO reports and skyrocketing interest in the possibility of extraterrestrial visitors. Kenneth Arnold's encounter not only stirred curiosity, but also fueled discussions about the existence of unidentified flying objects. His detailed account of the event, along with his estimate of their astonishing speed at around 1,700 miles per hour, left a profound impact on those who followed the story. Arnold's sighting played a pivotal role in popularizing UFO sightings and the UFO phenomena in the United States. It became a catalyst that inspired numerous other reports of UFO sightings across the nation as people started to pay closer attention to the skies. This surge in sightings and public fascination prompted the government to take action. While there have been attempts to explain Arnold's sighting as a misidentified natural phenomena or aircraft, the event remains a point of debate. Regardless of its true nature, Kenneth Arnold's encounters are among the most well-known. It ushered in the modern era of UFO interest, making it among the most accepted unidentified flying object sightings in history. Number 7. The Great Lost... if he was alive today, what, what he would think about with all that's going on with the UFO stuff. Especially him being the person that coined the term flying saucer. I wonder what he would, would say now. Los Angeles Air Raid On the night of February 24, 1942, just after the attack on Pearl Harbor, something strange happened in Los Angeles. Sirens sounded and lights searched the sky. By morning, no enemy planes were found. Some said it was a false alarm. Others saw something but couldn't agree on what. Over time, guesses ranged from balloons to even UFOs. Today, what happened that night in 1942 remains a mystery. Who knows? Your grandparents might have told you about this event, and you might already know a thing or two about this unexplained incident. If you do, feel free to share what you know in the comments down below. Number 6. The Ghosts of Hampton Court Palace Hampton Court Palace, a grand structure standing tall in England, is more than just a historical and architectural wonder. 
After all, its halls are filled with stories that would most likely keep you up at night. Over the years, countless visitors and staff have reported eerie experiences, whispered voices in empty rooms, cold spots in corridors, and even sightings of spectral figures have become woven into the fabric of the palace's lore. Now this photo has been haunting the public as well as the castle's guards since it was seen in 2003. This security camera photo shows what looks like a figure wearing bizarre clothing. Could it be a ghost? Perhaps the spirit of Henry VIII is still haunting the premises. Others believe this photo shows nothing but a quirky man wearing odd clothing. However, there are differing opinions on the matter. Number So we have to be honest, bro. We do have some weird people that dress up and do some weird things. You know what I mean? But hey, to each his own. Some people are just, that's what they're into. So I can't knock them for it. But yeah, sometimes you have that. It's not necessarily paranormal. <laughs> it's just uh, something strange. Let's just call it that. The Norwegian Spiral Anomaly On a cold December morning in 2009, Residents of northern Norway were greeted with an unusual sight in the sky. A white spiral of light, accompanied by a blue beam, expanded and rotated, casting an ethereal glow. This celestial display lasted for nearly 10 minutes before dissipating, leaving onlookers in awe and sparking a flurry of speculation. The immediate and widespread speculation revolved around everything from extraterrestrial involvement to new atmospheric phenomena. Social media and news outlets were abuzz with theories, each more intriguing than the last. The answer, however, came from an unexpected source. Russia's ministry later confirmed that the event resulted from a failed test launch of a Belava missile. The spiral pattern was likely caused by the missile's stage rotation and the sunlight's reflection, creating the captivating display. While the mystery of the Norwegian spiral anomaly was eventually resolved, there were still other theories and explanations about the bizarre phenomena. Conspiracists claim that the government tests are nothing but cover-ups for the more unbelievable truth. An ordinary government test or otherworldly visitors? Who knows? Number four. I don't know, man. Look like they're sending out a bat signal for UFOs, don't it? <laughs> they're sending out a signal or, or trying to communicate or something like that, you know? But at least they're, they're trying to give some sort of an explanation. We don't even get that, bro. <laughs> We don't get no type of response or anything like that. No explanation. At least they got that. Goddard Squadron Photograph Now perhaps this is the oldest ghost photograph that still remains debated to this day. This photograph was captured in the 1910s when it was taken to commemorate a group of RAF servicemen who had served in World War I. At first glance, the image appears to be a standard group shot, capturing a moment in time of those who have served together. Upon closer examination, an anomaly becomes evident. Behind one of the service members, the faint outline of a face can be discerned. Squadron members identified this seemingly out-of-place visage as air mechanic Freddie Jackson. The intrigue around this photograph revolves around the fact that Freddie Jackson had tragically died in an accident just two days before the photograph was taken. His untimely death had shocked his peers and his funeral had taken place on the very day the commemorative photograph was snapped. Naturally, when the photograph was developed and the anomaly discovered, it raised eyebrows. Some speculated that the image could have resulted from double exposure or some other photographic error, common issues with the photographic techniques of the time. Others, considering the timing and clear recognition of Jackson's face by his peers, felt it might have been a gentle farewell, a last appearance among his squadron mates. In an area where photography was still in its relative infancy, anomalies were not uncommon. Anything could be a possible explanation here. As eerie as this photograph is, there's something touching and melancholic in the idea of a deceased person joining his people for a memento one last time. Now tell me, just looking at this photograph, what do you think this is? Is it just a trick of the light? Or is this a ghostly figure who decided to join the rest of his squadron for one last photo? Number three. Yeah, I wouldn't have been mad at that. I, I, I'd have been actually, you know, a sense of calmness probably would have came over me to know that, you know what I mean? We He still made it in the picture. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't have had a problem with that. Still been a little bit of, but no, ultimately I would have reasoned and understood what that was. Three, the Lady of the Lighthouse. Lady the St. Augustine Lighthouse was constructed in the 19th century this lighthouse has witnessed significant changes since it was erected. 
Originally, St. Augustine had a wooden watchtower built by the Spanish settlers as early as the late 16th century. As the years rolled on, the need for a more durable and prominent structure became apparent, leading to the construction of the current lighthouse in 1874. Over the decades, it played a crucial role in guiding mariners safely along the treacherous waters of Florida's coastline. However, with the dawn of the 20th century and the progression of technology, the traditional roles of lighthouses and their keepers began to evolve. Automation became the new norm. Advanced systems and technology started to replace the need for a human presence to operate and maintain these vital beacons. By the mid to late 20th century, most lighthouses, including the one at St. Augustine, had transitioned to automatic operations, making the role of the lighthouse keeper obsolete. While the automation of lighthouses marked the end of an era, it didn't diminish their historical and architectural significance. The St. Augustine Lighthouse, for instance, remains a significant tourist attraction, not just for its architectural beauty and historical significance, but also for paranormal stories. Among the many stories, the most intriguing is that of the Lady on the Tower. Over the years, numerous visitors reported seeing a mysterious woman atop the lighthouse, gazing out towards the sea. Her identity remains a topic of speculation, some believe she might have been connected to a former lighthouse keeper, while others theorize she could be mourning a lost love. Regardless of her origins, the tale of the Lady on the Tower has become an integral part of the lighthouse's lore. This structure's rich history and infamy for the tales of the supernatural continue to attract both history buffs and ghost hunters who are curious about the alleged specters that haunt this lighthouse. Number 2. Hook Island Sea Monster in December 1964, Robert Lasseric and his wife were sailing in Stonehaven Bay off Hook Island when they stumbled upon an enormous serpentine creature. Well, that might not be the right description. This creature resembled a massive tadpole, measuring an estimated 30 feet in length. The creature simply remained underwater, completely still. Robert didn't miss his chance to capture a photograph of the creature. The? This was the beginning of the Hook Island Sea Monster. This is one of the photographs captured by Robert. Over the years, many have tried to decipher the truth behind this image. Some believe it's an undiscovered marine creature, while others think it might be a piece of underwater debris or even an elaborate hoax. However, many believe Hook Island has a real monster lurking beneath the waters. And now the more and more I look at these videos on the internet, the more and more I say to myself, I'm never going back into the water in the ocean, man. I don't, I don't, I think I, I, I've had my time. It's gone. It's past me now. You know what I mean? I did it back in the day, but I don't feel the urge to get back in that water, man. It's too much unknown. It's too many things I have seen. And I just know I wouldn't be comfortable. Uh-uh. Nope. At all. Y'all can continue on. That's totally up to y'all. But as for me, I have no urge or desire to get back in the ocean, man. I've seen way too many videos. Now it's time for today's topic. Mm -mm. These photos scared the entire world. I mean, who wouldn't be creeped out by a photo showing three people flying in the sky? Now you're probably thinking, this isn't really possible, is it? But have you heard about bioengineering? One of the most alluring prospects is the idea of humans achieving the capability to fly. While birds have evolved over millions of years to have lightweight bones, specialized muscles, and wings to allow for flight. Humans are biologically very different. Bioengineering poses the question, could we, through advanced genetic manipulation, achieve what birds and other creatures could do? Well, judging from this photo, perhaps some people have already achieved that ability. Could these images capture bioengineered individuals? Or does this image show people inherently gifted with the power to fly and do other things normal humans couldn't do? Well, the witnesses who captured this photo are convinced that this is indeed evidence of superhumans. However, others believe it's a hoax. Again, I'll hmm. let you decide as to whether this is a possibility or not. Number 1. The Giant Finger of Egypt. Finger of Egypt. This human finger measuring 15 inches was discovered in Egypt. Yep, it seems that the secrets of the ancient Egyptian civilization aren't over just yet. These photographs, taken by a researcher named Gregor Spori in 1988, reveals what appears to be a human finger, but its extraordinary length defies that assumption. 
If ex- I've heard of this story before. That's the first time I've seen this picture here where somebody's had to hold it. Like this picture here really puts it in perspective, the size of the finger. I've never seen nobody had to hold it with two hands. That's crazy. Extrapolations hold true. The owner of this finger would have stood over 16 feet tall. Build.de hosts additional images of this intriguing artifact, which even displays a visible fingernail. Could it be that giants really existed in the past? Regrettably, this specimen isn't displayed in an Egyptian museum. According to sources, Spori had to compensate an elder, reportedly from a lineage of Tomb Raiders, $300 to view and photograph this relic. As a result, the finger's authenticity remains unverified due to its private possession. The hope is that the increased attention will reintroduce this specimen to the public, allowing experts to inspect it. This discovery could prove pivotal in understanding our historical lineage. There's already substantial evidence suggesting the existence of giants in history. Instances like the Nephilim mummy discovered in Peru and the numerous giant footprints and skeletons found globally corroborate this notion. A mummified finger from a giant in Egypt would not only be astonishing, but would also challenge prevailing beliefs about Egypt's ancient history. But of course, we should look at this discovery with a healthy dose of skepticism. Although this finger looks incredibly realistic, there's still a chance this is nothing but a hoax. Well, we can't verify this finding for now, so I'll let you be the judge. Now you might have- Yeah, they even need to let scientists get a sample of that and test it and see what was going on, or figure out where did they locate this and see if we can get another one. You know I mean, that would be the only other way to kind of start to build upon that theory of giants walking the earth at one point in time, the Nephilim, the whole stories of that. You know what I mean? We've talked about that plenty of times. So if you don't believe or if they want more people to buy into it or believe that that thing is real, they need to send it off so it can get samples with scientists. That's what I'm saying. I agree with them on that. But um, y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you thought of these 20 strange and unexplained photos that scientists can't seem to explain. It's your boy, man. Y'all stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone.